Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, Python tutorial 2 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. Uh, in the earlier Python tutorial, we have uh, learned uh, different uh, uh, small programming with Python. Um, we have used arithmetic computation and we have uh, shown a uh, few loops and how to plot a graph. Now in this uh, tutorial, uh, we will go over how to represent a wave function and an op uh, later we will find out how to find uh, represent a, an operator, but uh, here we will um, show how to represent a wave function in Python programming and how to get the norm which we need to normalize a wave function and also we will calculate the expectation value. So let us uh, uh, go over this tutorial. The wave function and the operator, uh, wave function and the operator, uh, these are the two key constituents of quantum mechanics. The wave function represents the state of the system, which is represented by psi x, the state of a system is represented by the wave function. On the other hand, uh, when operator acts on the wave function, we get the observable. So when this operator acting on the wave function, we get the observable. Observable which is uh, which can be uh, observed experimentally. Therefore, because these are the two constituents of quantum mechanics, um, the first step towards obtaining numerical solution of any quantum mechanical problem is to represent the wave function and the operator in appropriate computer programming data structure. That is the first step we should have if we want to use numerical solution of quantum mechanical problem we have to convert this wave function and the operator in the computer programming data structure. Computer programming data structure. So this question is how to represent them. Almost all currently available numerical methods for solving quantum mechanical problems make use of grid representation of the wave function and the operator. So, so one way to do this is the grid representation. What is grid representation? I will, I will present it. A wave function by its nature is continuous. So uh, what would be the procedure to um, transform this operator into computer programming structure. This is something which we will look at later, not now in this, not, not in this uh, tutorial. We will just stay focused on the wave function part. So operator will be, we will be dealing with operator later. But uh, we know that wave function by its nature is continuous. That is the way we have uh, made the postulate of quantum mechanics. It is a continuous function, continuous in the in the coordinate space. So whatever variable we use, here we are using x as a variable which is the position space. So it is going to be continuous in the position space.
and this um, property of an wave function comes from the postulate of quantum mechanics. So, it is continuous in position space. But in the grid representation, the representation which we will use to uh, represent a wave function in the computer programming data structure uh, that is the grid representation. In the grid representation what we will do a continuous wave function is um, a continuous wave function. So, grid representation is following. a continuous wave function a continuous wave function is expressed on a set of position grid points. So, what does it mean? The entire position space, this is the x axis, entire position space um, theoretically x axis goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, but in computer programming data structure we will not be able to use this infinite uh, limit. So, what we will do? We will consider one x minimum and one x maximum value. Within this uh, um, range we will express the wave function and we will assume that in this boundary x minimum and x maximum wave function becomes 0. So, because it is 0 here already, so it will be 0 at minus infinity and plus infinity as well. So, we are following the boundary condition in the computer programming. So, uh, so the boundary has to be selected such a way the finite boundary this is the finite boundary you are selecting in the x axis this is the x coordinate. So, found finite boundary has to be selected such a way that the wave function will become 0 before that boundary. So, within this boundary what we will do uh, we will not be able to represent it a continuous wave function we have to uh, divide the entire problem domain this is called problem domain the this this x coordinate it is also position space it is also called problem domain or the position space this entire position space will be divide we will be dividing it into an uniform grid. So, we will have a discrete value of x and corresponding to discrete value of x we will have discrete value of the wave function. And each one let us say this is x naught, this is x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3, x 4, x 5 like this way and then this is if I have n number of uh, such grid points then I have this is x n minus 1 because it is starting from x 0 that is why it is going up to x n minus 1 that is the maximum value of x we get. So, what we do what we do here this in under grid representation we actually discretize the continuous wave function a uh, wave function by its nature but from the postulate of quantum mechanics it has to be continuous, but we have to represent in the computer programming we have to represent a continuous wave function in a discretized wave function. So, grid representation gives me a discretized wave function discretized wave function. So, discrete values of x I will get. So, so instead of drawing this I have to draw it like this way. It was like this. 
and I have now discrete values of wave function and this is going to represent uh, the wave function in the python programming. I get discrete values on the x grid. So, to, to understand this discretization of wave function further, um, we have to divide the certain range of x coordinate as I said that uh, this x coordinate I cannot take minus infinity to plus infinity um, limit in computer programming. I have to take the finite limit x minimum and x maximum and this range. So, x has to be then x minimum less than equals x x maximum. So, x value would be in between this x minimum and x maximum value and we will make sure that when you are defining this finite domain, we have to make sure that the wave function becomes 0 at the boundaries as if it already has become 0. So, so the idea is that at minus infinity and plus infinity it will be 0 and the um, requirement for wave function to be 0 at 0 value at minus infinity and plus infinity comes from the fact that this wave function should live in the Hilbert space. We have studied this Hilbert space meaning of Hilbert space in, um, in um, module 4 um, where we have discussed uh, the square integral um, uh, every wave function has to be square integrable so that we can normalize it. So, uh, the entire x uh, uh, axis uh, will be will be divided by a suitable small step size delta x to produce the uniform discrete grid. So, this is the uniform discrete grid we produce. So, we have let us say n number of discrete values of discrete values of x within this range. We have x now n number of discrete values. So, one can write down here is that x n minus 1 minus x n equals delta x that is the separation between each grid points. And and n minus x n minus one. This x n minus one. This is the final uh, grid point, which is the x maximum. That we can get. Uh, by taking x naught plus delta x multiplied by n, then I get this the maximum value. x naught is the minimum value. This is the x naught is the minimum value. So, I will plug that in. So, what I get is that x n minus 1 uh, th th this is going to be uh, n minus 1. It is n minus 1 times I have to add then I get this x naught uh, sorry x the final value. So, if we rearrange it I can write down x n minus 1 minus x naught divided by delta x equals n minus 1 or n I get 1 plus x n minus 1 minus x naught divided by delta x. So, how many grid points I have it depends on the spacing I am selecting 
and the range I am selecting. This is the range we have selected. X in minus 1, that's the maximum range and this is the minimum value in the range. So this many um, number of grid points we have. And because we have this many grid points, we'll have that many values of the function. And uh, this is exactly what we have shown here. Um, a continuous wave function, which is represented by dot line here, but we have to represent it on this grid. So on each grid point, I get the value of the function. So when a continuous wave function <laughs> is represented on the x grid, we get these values x x naught at x x equals x naught value I get function wave function value y naught then psi x1 I get y1 psi x2 I get y2 like this way and then psi x n minus 1 I get y n minus 1. So these are the values we get and um, in linear algebra um, one can represent this entire set of values as a column matrix. So psi x would be represented in the matrix form as y0, y1, y2, y3, yn minus 1. That is the column matrix we, we form. And that is the representation and uh, this matrix, uh, this is a, uh, this is a column matrix. This column matrix can be uh, represented in the Python programming by an array. So pretty much we have got an idea how we are going to represent the entire wave function um, in the computer programming. We have to prepare the array. So before we prepare the array, first we have to create the X grid. That is the way we have said that we have to prepare the X grid where um, we have to define the certain range which is let us say minimum to maximum. This is the range I have to select and then after selecting range I have to select also delta X then I can create this X grid. And on the X grid we have to find out the um, uh, wave function values to represent the wave function. We have already realized from Python tutorial, the first Python tutorial that uh, this A range functionality we have already used A range functionality start stop step uh, of scipy, uh, this uh, scipy module we are using. Um, it can actually return a list of evenly spaced discrete values of x within the given range. So this is the range start stop that is the range and then um, and th then this is the uh, difference between each grid point uh, each points evenly spaced points we can get it. So we will use this A range functionality to create that and I will just remind that uh, in arrange functionality when you use that stop this part will not be uh, used in the sequence or will not be included in the sequence. So a range if I write um, 1 then 5 then 1 it will return me uh, evenly spaced discrete values of the uh, discrete values of x in a following way, it will give me 1, then it will give me 2 because the difference I have selected to be 1, then it will give me 3, then it will be 4, then it, it, it is supposed to give me 5 but because 5 is stop and the 
uh, the way this arrange functionality works it will just exclude the last one. So, I get back this as a as a as a list of um, uh, values. To be technically correct although we should remember that we have also briefly mentioned that uh, in, the, in, a, in the previous uh, uh, Python tutorial that arrange functionality returns an array not a list. So, um, although we are calling it as a list, but uh, technically uh, this is an array we get. So, and uh, the difference between uh, list and an array in Python uh, programming, the list program, uh, this list is actually Python's built in program, uh, which is present in Python programming, but array, arrange functionality, this comes from scipy, this is actually scipy's functionality. Now, this list functionality uh, of uh, Python's built in functionality list cannot be used for linear algebra routines which are implemented in scipy. For that we have to use always uh, this array. So, that is that's the reason why we are using arrange functionality, it, 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 it returns an array. And one dimensional array is nothing but the column matrix or it can also be represented as a row matrix as well. So, uh, we will use this uh, arrange functionality. In general, the data structure which is used to represent mathematical matrix in computer programming is called array. So, this is uh, the definition of array is it is the mathematical um, um, it is the comp uh, to represent it, it represents a mathematical matrix in computer programming. And array can be n dimensional, it can have dimensionality of n, but two dimensional array is called matrix and a one dimensional array is called a vector. This is an one dimensional array which we have prepared for the X grid. Python does not have intrinsic functionality to deal with the array um, or different array operations, uh, broadly linear algebra routines. For that one needs to import, uh, import scientific functionality, uh, specific functionality from scipy. So, that is the reason why you are using scipy. So, you have to um, import this arrange functionality from scipy. So, we will prepare the grid and grid preparation is very simple. We will uh, move to uh, laptop now and we will prepare the grid. We will first uh, import and uh, this hash will indicate that uh, anything written after the hash would not be executed uh, in the Python programming. It is just for our information. So, we are importing the required libraries. Uh, we will name it um, wave dot pi and from psi pi import a range functionality. Then we will create the x grid. For that we have to define x minimum, x minimum we are defining 100 x maximum, remember we are defining 100.1 because this point will be um, excluded from the list and dx that is the difference between grid point adjacent grid point is point 0.1. That is why we have selected 100.1 so that it is, so the entire range is going to be uh, 100, minus 100 to plus 100. This is, this minimum is minus 100 and maximum is um, plus 100. Then we will just specify x equals 
a range x minimum x maximum dx that is the uh, construct of the a range functionality. Then we will just write down n equals len x. What it does? It will try to find out the number of elements. I will move to the uh, presentation in the slide. So, uh, this length is a Python's built in functionality which is len x. So, what it does if x is an array. then it will find out number of elements present in the array. That is the uh, functionality of length. This is Python's built in functionality. One does not need to import it from anywhere. We will move to the laptop and um, then I will just print n. I will print n to check how many elements I have in the prepared grid and I, all, I will also print x that is the x grid I have. So, if I want to now uh, run the program I have to use python then we have given wave name dot pi dot pi extension has been given and we can run the program. When you run the program we see that we are getting 2001 number of elements. This is the first print n that is the first printing and second printing is that the values of the x grid. The values of the x grid is minus 100 then minus 99.9 then minus 99.8 that is the way values should be. So, we have we will move to this uh, uh, slide we have 2001 number of n. So, n equals 2001 and um, if I, I am plotting uh, I am I am printing the entire x array here and the entire x means grid points I am uh, writing and if I look at the grid points it is starting from minus 100 to and ending at plus 100 with a uh, spacing between adjacent grid points is 0.1. That is exactly what we wanted to do. This is the construct which we have used already. Now, uh, we can we can recheck whenever we are doing uh, some numerical uh, uh, method we are following. If, if we are following numerical methods in the beginning we should always try to uh, match the result with an analytical uh, solution. So, we have already seen that uh, the n can be calculated, n is nothing but number of elements I will have in the grid point. So, I have prepared the grid points from minus 100 to plus 100 with a separation point 1 that is the grid points x grid I have prepared. So, how many elements I have that is given by n equals 1 plus x maximum minus x minimum divided by delta x which is nothing but 1 plus x maximum was 100 minus x minimum was minus 100 divided by delta x equals 0.1 which is nothing but 200 divided by 0.1 which is 2001. So, uh, length this functionality is giving me the correct number of elements I have in the x grid. And, uh, um, and, and to, to stop uh, the, the to, to make this uh, to uh, make this um, range to be minus 100 to plus 100 I just remind that x maximum we have taken to be 100.1 because the last in the that is the way a range functionality works. A range functionality this top part this top will not be uh, included in the sequence.
that's the way it, the, the, the constant it, it, it works. So once we have already discretized the wave, um, once we have a disc, um, X grid, on this X grid we will now uh, uh, represent uh, or discretize the wave function. So when you are discretizing a wave function, you have to uh, take one um, example. Uh, one can take an example of let us say Gaussian function. It's an it's just an wave function. That's the rep one representation of the wave function, a Gaussian function, and uh, we will take this example to demonstrate that how to discretize the wave function on the X grid. So, uh, the first part of this programming is quite uh, understandable. Now we have created the X grid first, and then we have to discretize it. When you are discretizing it, it is very simple. When an array is used as variable for a mathematical function, mathematical function such as this psi x. So psi x, x is an array. If, if, if this is an array, then we produce, if we, if, we, if we directly write down psi x equals e to the power minus x, x square, then we produce another array containing function value corresponding to each element of the array variable. So basically if we, so this construct directly representing this construct because x is an array, I will produce another array of psi psi. So if x is an array which is starting from 100 to plus 100, then I will get psi which can also be expressed as y is also an array and this array will have the elements where function values will be presented corresponding to each uh, grid point. That is the way it works quickly. And this plotting part, we are familiar with this plotting part with the, by using this matplot library, pyplot uh, submodule. Um, we are plotting it to uh, make sure that we have the wave function, the desired wave function. So we will move to uh, uh, laptop and we will now delete will not delete this part, we will just keep it as it is importing the libraries. Now we will add one more um, line here because we are going to plot it, so that is why we are uh, importing uh, plot and show functionality from matplot library pyplot. So from matplot library dot matplot lib dot pyplot. Uh, import plot and show both I need and then I have created this grid this is this, this part is creating the grid and then I will now discretize I will now discretize the wave function and this is very simply done. I can name it psi psi, I can I could name it y or something else as well, just I am naming it psi psi uh, equals this is exponential. So exponential is not available, this is a mathematical function is not available with uh, uh, Python, it has to be imported from scipy, so I have to import from scipy. So I have written, um, so psi, uh, so I am importing this exponential from scipy and then now uh, this psi will be, uh, psi will be defined, psi is defined as minus x square square is double star 2. This is the uh, psi and next what we would like to do is that we would like to plot so that I can see what I have discretized. So plot the wave function. I can plot it, plot construct is x comma y here x sorry x comma 
it cannot be y the name is psi. So, x comma psi and that is the construct is it will plot and it will take the x array and y array and corresponding element wise they will plot it and finally, I have to give this show command to display the, um, the web function. So, if I now run this program I uh, get the web function. One can select a particular x limit to show uh, the, the, uh, the Gaussian function for a uh, shorter x limit because it will, it will give you the correct shape of the Gaussian function. Um, otherwise, if we uh, uh, see it in a longer x scale, it is it, it may not give you the right representation. It is just a representation problem, but it, 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 it plots the correct wave function. So, we have this discretized wave function plotted already and this psi uh, uh, we will move to the slide right now. So, this psi has now an array. So, both x and psi is an array. So, the idea of discretizing the wave function is to prepare the array associated with the wave function on the um, uh, grid points. So, once we have represented a wave function, here we have taken an example of um, uh, Gaussian uh, wave function, we can go ahead and normalize the discretized wave function. We will continue the session. Um, uh, we'll continue learning uh, how to represent the wave function, uh, how to normalize a wave function, how to normalize a discretized wave function um, in the next session.